Well, what's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another Victory Group. Yes. We always say this. We're so grateful that you're part of a group like you are. Mm -hmm. Thank you for attending as Thank much you. as you possibly can. Because as Pastor Aisha says, groups, small groups help us stay l smaller as we keep getting what? Larger. And larger and larger, especially now. Now, if this is your first time, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being a part of group. And mm -hmm. we believe this is not going to be your last time that you're really going mm -hmm. to clock in and come again and again and again. Yeah, and I love about our small groups because our small groups are a way that you're able to really take the word yeah, that yeah. you're hearing on a regular basis on Sundays and Wednesdays, really dissect it and, and ask yourself, how does this word really apply to me? Right. What changes do I need to make so that I can truly be victorious in Christ Jesus? So awesome sauce. It's really important. Well, let's dive in, maximize our time. We've been in this awesome, wonderful teaching entitled in this series, The Abundant Life. The Abundant Life. And man, it's been good. Every series is good, but th yeah. this one is really, really good because of the very nature, which is really the foundation of the definition that we give mm -hmm. on the abundant life. Because mm -hmm. people think abundant life is cash, cribs, cars, mm -hmm. material things, but it's, not. it's Wh not. What's the definition we gave for the abundant life? We said that the abundant life is the state of life that is above the average yeah. and beyond the statistical norm where you overcome every obstacle barrier and adversity that will try to keep you from experiencing God's best in every situation. So the abundant life is not stuff. And mm -hmm. we said in this series, it's not God's best. That's not the abundant life. The abundant life is this mentality that says I'm able to handle and overcome any adversity, mm -hmm. any situation, any crisis. I can overcome it to stay in faith to experience God's best. Yeah. When, when, when I think about the abundant life, I think about being, doing, and having everything that God had ordained for me to have. Yeah, because there's yeah. sometimes you can have stuff that God never ordained for right, you. And if right. you have stuff that you're not supposed to have, you're not really experiencing the yeah, abundant life that yeah. you think you are. Mm -hmm. But you're not because, you know, I think that you, you'll have temp a temporary feeling of satisfaction. Right. But after a while, you're not going to be satisfied. And then you're going to sit there and wonder, why aren't I satisfied? Yeah. Because you're receiving something that God never ordained for you. Right. When you receive what God has ordained for you, when you're experiencing what he has in every area of your life, yeah. then you're experiencing that. Yeah, kind of life. yeah. You can have stuff, but you have this defeat attitude. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, it's it's really this. It's the stuff that God ha has ordained for yeah. you. Yeah, that's yeah. most important. And what has He ordained? For and we, you? one of the things we said is the proven plan or the road to that is the life of faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the just shall live how? By faith. By faith. And so faith is, we always tell people, it's what? Corresponding, suitable, suitable appropriate action. action what, what you believe, believe in God, God for? Out of, out his, out of word. his word. So if you're going to experience the abundant life, you have to live this life of faith. There has mm -hmm. to be this constant movement based upon the word of God. Mm -hmm. And with that, we've been diving in lately on the abundant life in my health and healing. And one of the things we began to do is go through scripture to see in scripture again and again, it is the absolute will of God for us to experience health and wholeness. Mm -hmm. God's word reinforces that. It's his will for us to be healed. For if you need healing, to have healing, to walk in health by the stripes of Christ, we are Healed. Healed. Jesus came, we might have life and have it more, more abundantly. abundantly. But one of the things we said is that, you know, when you look in scripture, healing always manifested or was activated by faith. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to use their faith to activate healing. And so healing's not going to come just because you need healing. Mm -hmm. Healing's going to come because you stand in the gap and in spite of what you're facing, in spite of what the doctor report says, you stand by faith on the word that it's God's will mm -hmm. for you to be healed. And, and I think it's a wonderful thing to know, okay, this is how I get healing. Mm -hmm. Even when the doctors have given up hope that you go, okay, I'm going to stand in faith. Mm -hmm. God's word is above or over the doctor. And so the doctor says this, this, and this, but the word says I have a right to health and wholeness. Amen. So I'm going to stand in faith. And we said, you got to embrace this because there's so much resistance to the plan of healing based mm -hmm. upon the word. There's, there's false teaching out there. People think, you know, that God puts sickness on you. Or if you get sick, that's just the will of God. You mm -hmm. ought to accept it. You know, there are people, there's this erroneous talking and, you know, this just erroneous mentality about sickness and that I have to just accept it and go through it. And so you got to believe what the word says so that you can overcome all of the resistance 
to the plan of God. Yeah, I, even healing, when you think about healing, healing is when you receive healing, you know, you know, in your body, you know, you are to give God glory. Yes. You know, it's not even about, it's, again, it's not about you, but it's like, what is the God that wants to do through you so that he can be glorified, yes. so that he can be uh, magnified, even yes. through the healing? Absolutely. And then, you know, one of the things we said, you got to get, you know, when you really under about healing, you people have to get a revelation of God's power to heal, mm -hmm. of God's power to heal. And we really, we gave a definition for the power, you know, of God, but, you know, really we said, I don't know if you have that in front of you, because I didn't tell you to get that, but really we said that definition really just sums up, nothing's too hard for God. Mm -hmm. You know, the power of God is I about there. Okay, what's the definition we gave? We said the power of God is his ability to impact natural situations with dynamic forces to change the course of nature. And we said the simplicity of that definition is nothing's too hard nothing for, God, too hard for that God. That it doesn't matter what I'm facing. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. Nothing's too hard for God. And we, we talked about, you know, the power of God is reinforced in creation. That when you look at out, you know, in creation. And Job 26 talks about that, man, mm -hmm. that the creation reinforces the power of God. And then we looked at the power of God as scripture shows up in crisis. Mm -hmm. and we walked through different, you know, scriptural situations where there was a crisis going on and the power of God shows up. And then something wonderful happened in our church. You know, something wonderful happened. Mm -hmm. The Lord said that he wanted to demonstrate his power through healing yes. for people that had some real health challenges. And man, a few weeks ago, we had, we had a time of prayer for healing. And the testimonies that have come in have been phenomenal. Again, all things are possible to them that yes. believe. Yes. That is yes. the key. Do you believe yes. that God is a healer? Do you believe that God wants you to experience the abundant life. Those who truly believe, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, you know, that you remind me of something. We looked at a scripture in Mark chapter 9. Mm -hmm. A father comes to Jesus and he's questioning Jesus about, we talked about this in one of the messages, the power to heal his son. Yeah. And Jesus responds and says to the father, it's not a matter of the ability of the power. He says it's a matter of your ability to believe mm -hmm. that the power can heal. Well, how many times has Jesus said in his word, your faith has made you yes. whole? Yes, yes. So it's your faith which you have to believe in right. order to have faith. Yes. That, the scripture, that he says yeah. has made you yeah. whole. Yeah, because the, the scripture says faith is the substance of things hoped hope for, for, the, the evidence, evidence of things, things not, not seen. seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yes. You hope in what you believe. Mm -hmm. So in order for there to be now faith, because faith isn't tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Faith is not next week. Somebody's saying, well, I'm, I'm hoping God will heal me. I'm believing God will. No, 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 no. Faith, now faith says, I'm the healed, healthy, whole child of God, mm -hmm. resisting all sickness and disease. Faith is active. Faith is now. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, so this whole power of God, getting this revelation that nothing's too hard for God. Nothing. His power supersedes every situation, every circumstance. In spite of what the doctor says, in spite of the x-ray, it doesn't matter. God is able to do whatever needs to be done. Nothing, nothing, nothing's too hard from God. So this, this whole teaching on the abundant life pertaining to health and wholeness is so good because, you know, you could have a whole lot of money, but if you don't have your health, that's not abundant.